Hi, my dear conquerors. This is Dr. Kalyani from Team MDS Conquer. So today we'll be discussing about gingiva as its part two, where we'll be seeing it as microscopic features and histology. So gingival anatomy has two types: surface, superficial epithelium, which with cells like this, and inner connective tissue structure. So this is microscopic part of uh, the gingiva. Epithelium is of three types again: junctional, sulcular, and oral epithelium. And connective tissue has its own elements. This is a box given in Karanza. Remember here, everything can be given as individually like bits. Like which of the following is a major type of cell type seen? And they will give you options: keratinocytes, Langerhans, melanocytes, Merkel. So what you will write is keratinocyte. They will ask you uh, the the type of cells present in the epithelium. So these are all the various ways they can give you the questions from this box. Okay. So keratin proteins. We have keratin as the keratinization, and keratin is the most important part in the epithelium. And here, if you see, generally you come across the keratin protein numbered K nineteen, K one, K nine, in like likewise, right? And beside that, today we have seen that there is a molecular weight written. That means, if you see these molecular weights, so as the number is decreasing, the molecular weight is increasing. That means they are inversely related. Okay, as this is less, this molecular weight would be more. That is how it's a relation between keratin proteins. They are non-keratin proteins also. What are they? They are keratolinin and involucrin are other two types of non-keratin proteins. And here you have something called corneocyte. They can be bits asked. So what is a corneocyte? A corneocyte is a differentiated epithelial cell. It is composed. For example, this is the corneocyte. Okay, this corneocyte is composed of lot of these ground substance. What is this ground substance made up of? It is made up of filaggrin. If you see, what is filaggrin? Filaggrin is from the keratohyalin granules. So, apart from filaggrin, you can also see there are these tono filaments. So basically, this is coronocyte made up of filaggrin, and they are lot of these tono filaments. This is about the cell called corneocyte. Okay. Coming to the moving on, we so basically this structure, how it is, what are keratinocytes? They are the major type of cells present in the epithelium. Now, what are these desmosomes? These desmosomes are the ones which connect the keratin to keratin to see like this. This desmosome connects two keratinocytes like this. We have a beautiful image in the next slide. I'll be explaining you. Okay, so let's see. Just make a note of these points and let's move on to the next slide. So come here. Let's see see how desmosomes are present. How hemi desmosome are present. So basically, desmosome and hemi desmosome. Hemi is half of that of a desmosome. Ideally, to remember, right? Okay. For example, if this is the entire structure of a desmosome, only this part is the part of a hemi desmosome. In the very easiest way to tell you. Okay. Now. Hemi desmosome is half of that I told you right. All this is just for you to remember, okay. And somehow it is related to the structure. Some desmosomes are connected. These are the keratinocytes in the layer. So this is the hemi des uh, sorry desmosome connecting each cell. Now you see here they are hemi desmosomes. They are connecting the keratinocytes to that of the external basal lamina. So again. Two concepts: external basal lamina, internal basal lamina. What are this? See, if you see internal basal lamina given in the color of blue, what is it holding? Cementum and enamel. That is, it is holding the tooth structure. Here, if you see, this is pink color. That means it is holding the connective tissue. मतलब the external basal lamina is towards connective tissue. Internal basal lamina is towards that of the Tooth structure, okay. So how so many bits we are covering here with an image. So if you see that external basal lamina is connected to keratinocytes with the help of hemi desmosomes. These desmosomes are interconnected to each other with the help of 
desmosomes so the keratinocytes which are connecting to internal basal lamina also through hemidesmosomes so everything is clear in this image if you see properly okay further there is something called if you see there is a basal membrane these are the basement membrane there is lamina lucida and lamina densa layers so directly if this layer is lamina lucida you can see that the hemidesmosomes are attached to lamina lucida layer of the basement membrane hope it is clear okay so let's see okay now what is it is we have various strata or layers in a epithelium in this there are various cells are there and various cell organelles are there so for example these are our various cells so we have this mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell okay they are they want to present in they want themselves to be more in the deeper strata okay and when so so they are all the mitochondria and they come up they are only hardly one two like that okay so because the mitochondria are more what is mitochondria it is the powerhouse of cell so our mitochondria the hero is more present in the lower layers that means lower layers are very active and ready to participate in all the kind of reactions so we have lot of this aerobic glycolysis actively oxygen related glycolysis seen in the lower layers hence the energy production and more active are the supra uh, basal and the supra basal layers okay so upper layers less uh, mitochondria are present but they have to perform some something right so they per they perform the pento shunt which is an alternative of pathway of glycolysis you might have studied all this in your biochemistry so with this ultimately all of this can produce the keratinization of the proteins the keratinization process so once the keratinization process happens through the cells called keratinosomes okay they are also called as odland bodies which are what are they they are modified lysosomes the um, enzyme called acid phosphatase is important here and it is see it is seen mostly in these organelles okay coming to melanin melanin is important and its production is important so basically this is a uh, thyrosin okay this thyrosin to dopa thyrosin is converted to dopa that is dihydroxyphenylalanine through the enzyme called as thyrosinase the enzyme thyrosinase converts thyrosin to dopa and because of this further this is converted to melanin and you see this melanin pigmentation okay and we have different layers again based on the arrangement like this i will show you you can see there is junctional epithelium circular epithelium and oral epithelium coming to the cells okay the cells most important the hero cell is keratinocytes other cells are this one so our two important mantras to remember are proliferation and differentiation our cell has to proliferate that means it should produce lots of number of other cells so other cells are produced then they have to differentiate that means you should get one particular type of a cell say if you want to get one keratin either it has to be a keratinocyte or it has to be a melanophore or a langerhans cell whichever it is it has to differentiate right so that's what the process of proliferation happens through mitosis and i told you mitochondria hero is present in the lower cells that means the cell action will be more in the lower so it you can see more in the basal layer differentiation after they differentiate you see there are three layers i am explaining you the terms very clear further will be application of this thing so when they come i will be flipping my slides soon you just have to make note of all the points ortho keratinized okay it means it is a fully keratinized epithelium a beautiful keratinized epithelium which have a stratum corneum which have a granulosum proper granulosum layer you see there are no nuclei here okay it is a well keratinized tissue and if you see this okay next if you go they are para keratinized that means it's an intermediate keratinized tissue here you will see some pycnotic nuclei okay little little not like that and you see they are granules okay 
dispersed granules are seen but when you come to non keratinized here you will have no granules here but you will see a proper viable nucleus that means you understand it as ortho keratinized para keratinized and non keratinized is like a sequence of keratinization okay you also have non keratinocytes where you have melanocytes and melano melanosomes okay so this is an image showing you melanocytes these are the other kind of cells where all of them are presented they have functions okay langerhans cells make a note langerhans cells can be asked as bits so langerhans cells located among the keratinocytes at suprabasal layers okay so basically based on the function of the cell they are present in various layers okay for example you see if you see keratinocytes they are present towards the epithelium okay if you see langerhans cells they are intermittently present in between that of the epithelial cells melanocytes melanin production so if you see the cell based on you have to use your common sense if they will ask you which cell is present in which layer you have to think okay if it is a keratinocyte it might be it present in a superficial layer so am i accordingly mark the answer it is simple if you understand the concept okay so if you see this is the langerhans cell and these are the bits regarding this is a star characteristic shape of the langerhans cell and these are the barbecue granules which are present in the langerhans cell they have an important role in the antigen presentations okay coming to melanocytes they are they produce melanin and they are present in stratum basal and stratum spinosum layers as you can see okay and they are merkel cells which have some sensory nerve fibers that is how they help in tactile perceptions and then the coming to the microscopic features second part that is that of the epithelium okay here epithelium i told you are of outer enamel epithelium sorry or outer epithelium then you see sulcular epithelium and junctional epithelium so our outer epithelium is present in the outer layer having all the four layers are stratum corneum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum and stratum basal and below it is connective tissue okay if you see this is how the stratum uh, uh, stratum granule or uh, that is outer enamel epithelium is present okay here the keratinization is more so if you see in the next slides further these are all the keratin proteins you can see the differences okay i told you the uh, how ortho keratinized para keratinized non keratinized are what are the differences between them you can appreciate in this slide make a note of this slide yeah so i wanted to tell you this is keratinized and this is non keratinized and how they are differentiated if you see this keratin granules and is this keratinized layer they are all seen in the superficial layers when compared to non keratinized you don't see any of them okay coming to sulcular epithelium other type okay here it is thin and this is non keratinized that means you have no keratinocytes it look like this one sulcular epithelium will look like this oral epithelium will look like this clear it extends from the coronal limit of, okay i will show you the extensions in my further slides enzymes these two enzymes are star enzymes please remember and make a note of this thing coming to junctional epithelium okay so this part here this is the oral epithelium along the sulcus you see it is sulcular epithelium at the junction it is junctional epithelium okay here they have uh, described how the junctional epithelium is there what are the different types and the range so junctional epithelium is very important as you can see see here is the junctional epithelium okay it has some keratin proteins like this make a note of this lysosome salt or all the kind of Uh, lysosome like bodies are present but keratinosomes are absent okay now again the junctional epithelium has three parts so basically oral epithelium sulcular epithelium junctional epithelium is present right again in junctional epithelium if you see there is apical zone middle zone and coronal zone so this is a coronal part of it is having greater permeability coming to the middle part it has a adhesive property okay apical zone have germinative property so from here lot of cells are produced and they keep going to the outer layer so every zone has its own property 
again this is a repetition of that image i told you this is discussed tooth surface how it is connected connect to tissue okay make a note so this is how the uh, desmosome and keratinocyte structure is so what is dento gingival unit it is the union of junctional epithelium and the gingival fibers so this is the importance of junctional epithelium it's a very dynamic structure it has a beautiful turnover that is the reason why where is any injury to the epithelium junctional epithelium has the best turnover and keeps forming cells it also have a host defense it is active against the bacteria so these are all the good points about it come let's come to the connective tissue come connective tissue is also called as lamina propria it has papillary and reticular part papillary means the papillary part like this reticular means making a net like appearance so coming to connective tissue you also have cells and fibers okay so fibers are what are they dento gingival alveolar gingival that means they attach the dent matlab tooth to gingiva alveolo gingival bone to gingiva circular fibers dento periosteal fibers again tooth to the periosteum transeptal from one septa to other of the tooth okay this is one image where all the i try try to combine all the various fibers in one location if you see how they attach see from that of the uh, bone uh, tooth to the bone then again c d e please have a look out of all these fibers yes here are the secondary or the minor collagen fibers where they are periosteo gingival interpapillary transgingival intercircular intergingival and semicircular fibers so coming to the ground substance it is mainly made up of water proteoglycans and glycoproteins what are the different type of proteoglycans it has hyaluronic acid and chondroitin sulfate and glycoproteins are fibronectin and lamellin other fibers non collagenous can be okay apart from collagen there are reticular oxitalin and elastic fibers i told you already that the fibroblasts are important cells which produce the collagen fibers so these are the structures of fibroblasts there are the other type of inflammatory cells which are present like plasma cell lymphocytes pmns and in, these are the inflammatory cells okay so thank you so much for your patience